Today I'm back at a somewhat chilly Land Rover HQ to continue my quest to find out how the Range Rover team has developed the new Evoque. This is their private test track facility, so we're better to find out about the ride and the handling. Hopefully my Access All Areas Pass will allow me to tag along with the team for the ride and the handling. Putting the lightweight Evoque through its paces is vehicle dynamics expert Pete Davis. His job is to develop and perfect ride and handling until it meets the stringent targets that Range Rover sets. Pete, tell me how you achieve such a responsive ride on the Evoque because it's kind of got a dual personality really. You want a car that's comfortable and quiet on the motorway, excellent nimble round town, but also if you want to go mud plugging, you can. It's like any, any project really, Johnny, if you're going to get the foundations right first, so the car's got a bit of light and stiff. Um, taking weight out isn't just about what you do, it's about where you do it. So you want to take the weight out away from the driver so that the car feels like it rotates around you. Yep. Um, lightweight's good for off-road, so to be honest with this, the car's going to be sort of really agile in an urban environment. Still be refined and relaxed when you're cruising on the motorway. At the same time, if you want to, as you say, you want to go out, you want to go mud plugging, then it's a Range Rover. Of course you can go and do it. Let's talk more about the adaptive suspension system of the Evoque, because after all, that's kind of critical to, to all of those road manners we've just mentioned. It uses a system called MagnaRide, which is a, uses a magneto rheological fluid. It's basically um, oil with, I guess you'd call them iron filings, very, very small. And uh, instead of having any moving parts, basically use an electromagnet, and it changes the viscosity of the fluid. Monitors, steering wheel, throttle, brakes, damper, travels, vehicle speed about a thousand times a second. Kind of predicts what you're going to do to the car next, even when you've been at your most unpredictable. How can you explain that in simple layman's terms? Uh, just imagine this is the damper and this is my little valve. So you're going to try and move that from side to side. So that's basically in its soft mode. So you're cruising down the motorway, you're not steering, you're not using the throttle. So this and is, that's, this that's is just, like the shock absorber? That's like a shock absorber. I've got this little permanent magnet. Now let's see whether you need to go and work out a bit more. Crikey, it's just locked it straight up. So that's probably that's... the most extreme version. Uh, obviously I don't carry an electromagnet around with me, so I'd normally <laughs> we just vary the current, but uh, here that's... or maybe just vary the distance away, and, and that's probably more like how you'd like your Range Rover. So that... a little bit on the sporty side. That's nice. But still some plushness and comfort there. Yeah, that's incredible. And then that you... locks absolutely solid. Yeah. And if you go into dynamic mode, then obviously we can increase that, that current, a bespoke tune just for that situation. Let's talk E-Pass, mm -hmm. electronic power assisted steering, I know that much. But yeah. why did you go for it in the Evoque? Well, one of the underpinnings of, um, of Evoque is it's got to have an environmental conscience. And uh, traditional hydraulic power steering systems, basically the, the pass pump's sitting there spinning. Yep. And whether you're using it or not, you're still burning two or three MPG. Yeah. Uh, E-Pass, you only power it when you need it. And also because the car's got to be agile, we run about a 14 and a half to one ratio, steering ratio, which is the quickest in its class. So that means 14 and a half degrees up here on the, on the steering wheel gets you one down here, but obviously that could make it nervous at speed. So what E-Pass allows you to do more than any hydraulic system is you can change the damping and the inertia feel, you can change the efforts. And when you press a button, which is really hard to do with any hydraulic system. I've been fortunate enough to see the Evoke's whole R&D process and, and, and everything. There's one thing I haven't done is, is I've not actually been out on the track. I've not been in it yet. OK, well, let's go. Join me in part two, where I experience firsthand just how well the Evoke performs. My experience of the Evoque so far has been very positive. It still retains core Range Rover characteristics and values, but experiencing it now on the road, there's something different about it. A lightness, a real sportiness. 
I'm also struck by just how well it goes. The Range Rover engineers have used advanced powertrain technologies such as turbocharging and direct injection to effectively downsize the engine, meaning you get ample power all wrapped in a nice small economic package. This four-cylinder 2.0-litre GTDI produces an amazing 240 PS. With its lightweight aluminium chassis and lightweight components, the Evoque is 33% lighter than a Range Rover. This, combined with a smaller capacity powertrain, delivers huge advantages in MPG performance and emits less than 130 grams of carbon per kilometre. Combine this with excellent on-road dynamics and agility makes the Evoque a car for the city. So there's no doubt that the Evoque is more than capable in the city and, if you choose, you can drive through France comfortably and spend the week on the Riviera. Or you could just have a dirty weekend. And you can rest assured that however dirty your weekend gets, the Range Rover Evoque will cope with it admirably. This genuinely is a Range Rover and upholds the Mark's legendary off-road capabilities with a aplomb. This is the lightest, smallest, most fuel-efficient Range Rover ever made. It delivers a package of impressive on-road agility and refinement, but without compromising Range Rover's legendary off-road capability. That's what Range Rover has built. What the new owners will do with it, well that's down to them. <laughs>